Hi and welcome to this video and in this video we're going to be learning about mission and vision statements and first of all I'd like to give you five good reasons why you should learn about mission and vision. The first thing is is that in order to write a good mission and vision statement you need good communication skills and if you study mission and vision statements this will help to develop your own communication skills. Number two, it's a very good idea in life and in your studies to be able to set out your own goals and to set out how you're going to achieve those goals. This will involve writing your own personal mission and vision statement. Number three, the third thing is that by studying mission and vision statements, you'll begin to learn about how companies develop their strategies and how they carry out these strategies. Number four, number four is about job interviews. A question in a job interview often concerns the company's mission and vision statement. And they ask you questions about the mission, mission and vision in order to establish what you understand about the company. Number five, learning about mission and vision will help you with your business English course because if you can talk about mission and vision statements, you can bring this into many different questions about strategies and about goals and about the aspirations of the company. So I hope I've convinced you that it's a good idea to learn about mission and vision and to begin to understand about mission and vision. So this brings us to the question of what are mission and vision statements? So let's begin to understand, first of all, what a mission and a vision statement is and what the difference is. So let's start with the mission statement. Now, a mission statement is a statement of the company's purpose. And the company's purpose is the underlying intention or motivation of the company. It tells you why that company exists and why the company is in business. And companies with a stronger sense of purpose, they're much better, to, they're much better able to express their values and their goals, to keep their talented employee, em, employees, and to, have, and to be able to build a loyal customer base. Okay, so that was a mission statement. Let's move on to a vision statement. Now we said a mission statement is to do with the present and a vision statement is all about the future. And it's all about the aspirations that the company has for its long-term goals. It's all about what the company wants to achieve in the future. And if we look at the word aspirations, aspira aspirations means hopes, hopes for what the company wants to achieve. And these could be different things uh, for different companies. It could be, for example, that your aspiration is all about uh, sustainability. It could be a commitment to the environment. It could be to growth and expansion. It could be to innovation and creativity. If these aspirations are clear to you, that will help you with the mission statement because you'll have then a stronger sense of purpose and direction for the company. So here are my seven guidelines for writing good mission and vision statements. So number one is clear. Be clear. Use language that is simple, direct and easy to understand that communicates directly. Number two, be concise. Be concise. Concise means get to the point. Get to the point quickly, giving the necessary details and information. Don't use lots and lots of words to express unnecessary details and, and information. My third idea would be have focus. Focus on the company's values. 
What are the company's fundamental beliefs and principles? What is its culture? What is its goals? Outline those goals and, and be clear about the steps that you want to take in order to get there. Number four, use language that is positive, inspiring and motivating that encourages all your employees. Now, number five is be specific, and this is connected to being precise and having focus. Be specific about, about your goals and aspirations. Now, number six is very important, and we'll talk about this again in a little bit of time. But my sixth one is be unique. What is it that makes you different from other companies? What makes you stand out from the crowd? And then we've got my seventh point, and this is connected to doing a business English course. But my seventh point is these days I would encourage companies to write their mission and vision statements in English. If you write, if a company writes in English, it can reach a wider audience. It can reach out across culture and languages. By not trying to use many different languages, they're going to avoid different, mis different un misunderstandings in different cultures. It could also be argued that writing in English simply make th makes things more modern and more up to date. So then we come on to the next question, and the next question is simply why? Why do companies bother writing these mission and vision statements? Surely there's an argument that this in some ways is a waste of time and that companies should really concentrate on their day-to-day -day business. Well, they can do that, of course, but there are certain advantages to writing mission and vision statements. And number one is um, it helps the company stay focused on its goals. Number two, mission and vision statements provide a, a framework for decision making. And number three, which we have touched on before, is um, it, they really help employees and all the other stakeholders in the company to understand what the company is all about and what direction everybody is moving towards. So let's move on to my next point. And my next point is, well, get it wrong, get it right. Now, one of the problems with mission and vision statements is that when companies write them, they're poorly written and they're poorly defined. Very much basically, they don't follow the seven guidelines that I gave you previously. Another problem with mission and vision statements is they're a little bit generic. Now, what does generic mean? Well, generic means that they could be written for any company that the company just says the same as other companies and doesn't write something that's completely unique about that company. So let's take a fast food chain as an example. Now, we can imagine a fast food chain and it has a mission statement that says, to provide customers with delicious food and excellent service. Well, this is a little bit boring. It goes a little bit over your head. There's nothing unique. There's nothing memorable about this statement. And this is why we call it generic. It could be talking about any fast food chain that's out there. If the company wanted to write a better mission statement, they would have much many more specific details or they would have many more unique characteristics about their restaurant that make it different to other restaurants. But if you want to find good examples, there are many, many good examples out there and you can find many uh, on the internet. Let's just take a couple of examples and let's start with Google. Now Google's mission statement says to organize the world's information and make it universally acceptable and useful. Now again, this is clear, it's concise, it's memorable, it's something the employees can relate to and get behind. 
And once a company has a mission statement, it's really important that they communicate these mission statements and they let everybody involved know about the mission statement so they have the opportunity to get behind that mission statement. So let's quickly have a look at Google's vision statement. The vision statement is to provide access to the world's information in one click. Now again, this is aspirational. It's looking to the future and it's related to the company goals. Tesla's mission statement is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Now again, it's clear, it's concise, and this communicates the company's purpose. The vision statement is to create the most compelling car company of the 21st century by driving the world's transition to electric vehicles. Now this communicates the company's long-term goals, it's aspirational, and it has a really nice phrase to become the most compelling car company. Compelling is a, an interesting adjective because it's um, more interesting than just saying leading, which could be a little bit generic. And compelling really gives the idea of uh, arousing interest, arousing attention, being irresistible in some ways. So that brings me to my final point. And this is a business English course. So we're going to look at grammar. And there are three points of grammar that I would like to point out. The first is the use of the present tense and the second is the use of the active voice. Now both of these give a sense of immediacy and of urgency and the other the third thing that I would like to point out is the use of adjectives. So let's first of all look at the present tense and look at an example. So here we have a mission statement. We provide exceptional customer service and innovative solutions that empower our clients to achieve their goals. Now, this statement uses the present tense, uh, provide and empower, and it uses the active voice. We empower our clients. Again, the active voice is more direct, it's more clear, it's more immediate. It's much more effective than using the passive voice. For example, if I say actively, we will achieve our goals, that's much more effective than using our goals will be achieved. Now, another feature of mission statements is good and powerful, the use of good and powerful adjectives. Uh, let's get, look at another example, a vision statement this, this time. Uh, our vision is to be a global leader in sustainable technology, driving innovation and positive change for future generations. And again, we've got adjectives here, global, sustainable and positive. So, in conclusion, it might seem that mission and vision is a potentially boring exercise in corporate jargon, but actually good mission and vision statements are essential for the success of a company. They provide clarity and direction. They help employees see and understand what they're working for and what they're moving towards. And they help all stakeholders in the company to understand what the company is all about. So that was all about mission statements, what they are, what the rules should be for writing mission statements, why we write them, a little bit of information about when they fail and when they succeed, and a little bit about the grammar in mission and vision statements. Thank you for listening and I will see you again in the next video.